This is the boardwalk border. So named because obviously the boardwalk there. And I've got every every border in this garden's got a name based around where it is or what it's trying to portray really. I've been working on this tonight when I got home. And one of the great pleasures I have is actually raking through the soil. I use a three pronged cultivator to do this and I get on my hands and knees and I have done tonight because I wanted to see if there's any seedlings that I could pick out. And I found the Eupatorium, sorry, Euphorbia, which is Amadegloides purpurea. In fact, I found two of those, which I hadn't found for a while. So I've got onto my hands and knees, found those, a tiny one, and then this slightly bigger one here, that one there. But I thought I'd just come through this border in a bit more detail than I would normally show you what sort of plants I've got going on. Now it gets a lot of sun in the daytime because that is south facing. So the sun hits it, it's not hitting it at the moment, it's over the bungalow. But as summer progresses, it tends to get some late evening sun as well. But it won't do that just yet. So I'm quite open to growing quite a lot in this border. This is where I've put the wildlife pool or pools, the dip pools that I've done. And they're very successful. I'm finding lots of wildlife coming in and out of that at the minute. Not seeing the, any, any hedgehogs yet, but I'm living in hope that I will, if they've not already visited it. So I'll show you through some of the different plants that I've got in. And around the area. I'll go through them. I'll try not to linger too long, but you know what I'm like. So that's Eucara, and that's just the ordinary Zabaliana. But it's a really nice one because it produces that red, that red leaf that's quite natural to it. And it goes through a green phase as well, and it gets not too big, but it's it's quite nice. It's a bit boring for most people, but it's it kind of suits what I do. Now this area is quite heavy. I'm on heavy chalk anyway, but down here I've noticed that there's probably a little bit of clay in it. There must be some clay in it. I don't know how that's happened, but there's probably a little bit of clay in there. But sometimes that helps. Now I've got Melica ciliata here, Uniflora. It's a little grass there. It's the rice grass, commonly called the rice grass. Let's see if we can see. Yeah, there you go. Look, the little seeds there. If you can just pick those seeds out there. That's why it's called that. And they like kind of shady conditions. So this is under the con um, contorted nut tree. The Avalana contorta. I'm oh, sorry, Coralus Avalana contorta. It's been an hard day. I've got Epimedium and this one's uh, Rubrum and I love Epimediums. I've got two or three going at the moment in this garden. Not, I'd like more to be honest, but I really like them and they take a lot of shade and they do flower, but they're really, really insignificant. But I love them nevertheless. They have this lovely, lovely red edge to them, as you can see. So they're really nice to have. Now, this is the sorbus. This is Kashmiriana that I've removed and put into this pot because it's, uh, it was in an area that I was redeveloping near the shack, the other side of the shack. And it's a lovely little, lovely little tray. And as I've said before, I bought it when it was tiny and it remains fairly squat. Now, I know sorbus Kashmiriana can be a shrub. Certain types of it can be a shrub. And this was a seedling that I bought at an open garden. And it just seems to stay squat. I put it into this pot, but I'm hoping to get that out anytime soon. But I just love it. It's quite nice. I like sorbuses anyway. I've got a lot in this garden. But I really like that one. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. Maybe won't end up in here. So we've got the Symphytum, as usual. And as I've said, it can be invasive. 
but don't let that put you off. We've got geranium here. Not quite sure whether that's Johnson's Blue. I don't know. I've moved a lot of geraniums around. I've got a Perscaria here that I think is Amplexicolus and probably Firetail. Once again, the friend I bought it off, or that gave me it, didn't label it. This is the Symphotrichum, and this one's uh, Marina Walkonski. It's just starting at the moment, and that has a beautiful purple colour and it gets to about four or five foot high by the time it's finished and it's an absolute beauty so you should try and get hold of that one the rheum palmatum which i've said earlier is likely to be atrosanguinium that's what i think it is it's doing really really well and the euphorbias so this is the what they call the marsh spurge this particular one and it's wallenberg's glory so it's a euphorbia palustris wallenberg's glory and it loves damp wet conditions and hopefully some of that runoff from the ponds will make its way down to there it must be doing because it's doing really well it's probably the best i've seen it this year since we put that pond together and the rheum's doing absolutely excellently, which I expected it to do at this point because that rheum is three years old now, in this garden anyway. And now it's got the pond behind it that washes over and comes into it. It's helping it a hell of a lot. And the heavy soil is, I guess, really. Now, yep, there goes Amish again. He's loving this garden. <clears throat> what else shall we show you? So we've got Rudbeckia here. This is Rudbeckia lanciniata, herbstonna. And it's one of the sunflowers, tall sunflowers that uh, get to, well, the sunflower type flower that gets really quite big. Probably seven or eight foot in the end. It's a really good one. Now I've got it contained within this structure that I've been showing you before because it, this, although this one doesn't really flop, I wanted it to be contained because we're in a walkway here and I'm I'm trying to stop it flopping onto the path should it wish to do that. And by containing it in this, this should do it. It's more like a plant support than anything. We've got some ordinary Shasta daisies here. They were already in, so I can't really name it. I don't know if it's any particular one, but it's a real pretty white one that I decided to keep. And then behind it... That's, that's another geranium. Now, I found the label today, and it says Silostemum. I'm not 100% sure that one is Silostemum. It just doesn't seem right to me at the moment, but we'll give it time. I, it will give itself away eventually, because they get quite tall, and they've got a very distinctive purple flower with some... I think it's a black in, sort of inner bit to it. So I should be able to ID that at that point. And we've got this here. This is that Cynara cardunculus that I mentioned. And it was in that dustbin, if you remember. And I said I would have to keep it in there because it had been well protected. And it would resent me taking that away from it. But it's toughened up now. And it's doing really, really well. I thought I'd lost that. I did not think that was going to come back. But here we are. It's come back. I'd given up on it last year. Behind that, we've got Calamagrostis Cal Forster. That's going to look really good once this border gets into its stride and everything starts growing. It should pop up and above everything else. And just behind it, we've got my Euphorbia Malachi, which is still a baby, but it's doing quite well. I've got a gym behind it, an unknown species to me. And then to the right of that, I've got Deschampsia. Now that Deschampsia is one that a good friend of mine down at a nursery in Caister showed me, and it's probably going to be a seedling from Goldschleyer because I kept all my Deschampsias down there, and it just happened to be an absolutely cracking grass. It actually made about two foot higher than the normal Goldschleyer. So he selected it out. He's given me a little bit to test down here. So we're going to test it this year, and we'll see if it produces the gold seed heads which it's famed for so that's a bit of an experiment at the minute 
Now I've got this here and this little this little one here, this is got a pink flower developing already. And it, it was known as Perscaria bistorta, but it's now called Bistorta bistorta, which <laughs> doesn't really make any sense to me. But the plant people, that's what they're calling it. Now I've got the grass there. That's memory. If you remember, go back to my, my uh, previous videos and you'll see that's a tiny one. That's a split from the very big plant that I continuously videoed last year. And that's going to look absolutely belting once it gets going. Now in front of it, I'm not 100% sure what that is. I, I've got a feeling it's a plant called Dormia that I've got further up the garden. And I remember moving one, because I had two at the time, and I remember moving one. I brought it down without its label. I've looked for the label today, but can't find it. So we'll just hope that that is. And then what else have we got? I could show you. Of interest. Ah, this here. Now this is Leucanthamella serotina. And it's a Leucanthemum but it's a late season one, probably don't come out till October, as a pure white flower. And this one does actually follow the sun around. So it'll make four or five foot. One thing you have to be aware of on this one is that it can be a little bit spready. So in its sort of like third year, it will really romp away. So every year I take a little bit of the edge away and I shall do on this one, but I'm actually gonna take this edge away because this is on the path side and I don't really want it to flop onto the path. It doesn't flop onto the path because it's quite rigid, but it will grow into the path should I allow it. So we need to do something about that now. Now this plant here, I'm probably going to regret putting this in. This is Cephalaria gigantea that I was given. Probably regret it because it is very, very good at self seeding around, but I don't mind that. As I've said before, no such thing as uh, an hour control plant only the gardener that doesn't know how to control it so we shall <laughs> look in earnest for that one see what happens now although you can't see it at the minute there's a panicum there where you see that little white label that's a panicum and it's called dallas blues and it has a lovely blue leaf to it and it'll make about five foot in the end so that'd be really really nice that one now to the side there that's euphorbia, that's the euphorbia cross pasteurii that I told you that I didn't know if it'd live. And I thought I'd lost it in the last frost. Now we're expecting another frost at the end of this week, so I'm going to be covering that. I'm going to give it a chance because it's made it that far. So let's give it a chance and cover it a little bit. And we've got the common old cowslip, the primula veris there, the yellow flower, tucked in Calamagrostis brachytrica, which is a beautiful late season um, late season grass that takes shade and it takes it beautifully as well also this is the tub that I said I was going to contain the Miscanthus lutaria riparius in and I have I've contained it there and I've finally got the soil in it's got a solid bottom to it. I've poked some holes in, so I've made sure that it's sitting on this concrete base or this slab. Because remember, Miscanthus lutaria riparius is a very, very aggressive spreader. And before I finish this video, I'll just pop you around to the, the other one that I've had to contain. And I'm going to show you just why it's, uh, it has to be contained. This one here, another persicaria. I think the other name is Alpina, um, but it's a lovely big persicaria. I, I've not always known it as persicaria polymorpha. And sometimes in some years it can appear that it's not going to grow at all and it can just sit for ages and ages. But once it gets into maturity, it tends to come up a bit quicker. So that's really nice. Now we've got Elianthus ogialis here. One of my favourite tall plants. Again, sunflower type head on it. That's going to make nine foot. If you go back on some of my last year's videos, you'll see that. And again, I'm containing it there. In there. In that structure. And that's it should really hold itself. But sometimes they don't. They don't. Sometimes they flop. 
depending on how good the soil is. And I've said before in a previous video that if you water, water, water that one, it tends to stand rigid all the time and never flops. So that's Elianthus orgialis. The other one is uh, the Afghan elm plant, which is the other one, which is uh, Elianthus salicifolius. This one is a little bit more of a rugged cousin, I guess you could say. Acer. I love acers. Absolutely love them. And it's just coming into leaf, as you can see. I'm trying to think which one this one is. Uh, oh, the label's completely gone. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. I'll work that one out. Uh, but it's a nice one, to say the least. It's still a baby. A lot of stuff in here, remember. We're only three years in this garden, so most of this stuff is still only, maybe at the most, each plant's maybe five years old. But in the garden, only three. going to show you here oh this one i want to show you this first this is the honeysuckle this is the tiny honeysuckle i talked about and i mentioned before that this hydrangea here which is a quirky folia type is well it is quirky folia uh, they're, they're too close together they'll spoil each other eventually because this is more of a shrubbing honeysuckle and it should grow like a shrub and obviously this hydrangea is and this hydrangea can go between six and eight foot so I'm going to have to move one of them eventually. But they're also close to the Acer. So I don't know which one we're going to have to move. But one we will have to move. But time will tell. And, and then I put Osmundo regalis here. And it's growing. And I said I'd put it into this spot because it is the perfect spot for it. Because it gets all this water down on it. And once that overspills, that's going to absolutely love it. As is the hydrangea if it makes its way to that as well. So we'll do another walk through. It's looking really, really nice. I love it when you fluff up the soil like that. Don't forget, you need to do this on a regular basis. Especially if, it's, if it pans out. And by that, I mean if the soil hardens on top, the rain can't get in as good, the air can't get into the plants. Don't forget, plants need the air to ingress as well as water because those root systems need both. So you really need to break that soil up on a regular basis. I really like it from this position. I take lots of pictures from this position. It just looks really nice. So this would have originally been part of the longer border that I called the longer border, which went all the way down the garden originally. And now it's called the boardwalk border simply because it's next to the boardwalk. Oh, there's a lift room across there I meant to bring to your attention as well. There's a lift room just there, and it's one called Feuerkerzer, and it means fire candle. And again, it loves wet, damp areas, and it has this beautiful purple flower to it later on in the year. Then there's a hosta there that's a massive hosta, that one there, and it's called Empress Wu. If you look that one up, that is huge. Eventually, it's still a baby. I'm only in the second year with it at the moment, so it's not doing a lot at the moment. And then we've got another Sorbus here, and that's called Raven's Bill, which is a real nice one. And I've got a couple of grasses in here. There's no point in showing you Miscanthus really at this time of year, but there's a Miscanthus there, and that's called Garner. Now, if you want a Miscanthus with a, a reddish leaf from the word go, that's the one you should be looking for. As soon as it gets, that gets to about seven or eight inches tall, it starts getting its colour. Then there and there, we've got the symphotrichums as they are now, or Aster Monk, which is one of the best growing there. And I, I really like those. They add a lot of interest later in the season. and They're really, really blue in the flowers. So the flowers are really, really pretty. And from that little clump, 
it'll probably end up being a two foot spread once it grows and it stays a tight clump or seems to stay a tight clump for me like that but that will be a two foot wide clump by the time it flowers and then it goes back into that clump you just cut it back at the end of the season or beginning of the year like I do and then it starts again now there's a hosta here and I only put this hosta in the other day I found it further up the garden and I do not know what it is it's likely to be something like Alcyon or something like that or Big Daddy because they're the they're the two it most looks like at the moment and just behind it we've got another Miscanthus giganteus type and that one is gilt edge so it has a gilt edge as the name suggests I don't think I often show I don't think I've ever shown this this is like a little frog you can't tell it just looks like a little bit of a stone but it's actually a frog so people chance upon that and I'm quite surprised to see that it's a frog. Well, I think it's a frog or a toad, one or the other. Behind it, that's Calamagrostis that I was oh, that I bought from Pan Global Plants, and it's listed as Calamagrostis Kiger's Giant. And last year it did finally flower for me. I've been doubting for some time that it's actually a Calamagrostis, and it's more like a steeper to me. But I've got to go with what I was told. So that's Calamagrostis Kyger's giant, and I don't think you'll be able to get hold of that one because I'm not sure how many of those he actually had. So, what else have we got in here? So we've put another Miscanthus down here, just there, and that's Miscanthus Yakushimensis, but it's technically it's Yakajima. I've put it in there because it's going to flow over to the pond here or over to one of these pools eventually once it comes into flower then we've got a rundo donax macrophylli where the the little per, the little label is there something's been nibbling away at that and then i'll get pigeons down here now it's only a tiny one at the moment but eventually that's going to be a seven foot reed and it's really clump forming so it's really really nice when it gets going or oh, i hope it'll be nice once it gets going so the pit sporum's there now put that there ganetii really nice one then we've got a pinus mugo down there which looks nice so this whole border is coming into its own now it's starting to look really really good and i'm very very happy with it indeed so just before i end i will take you up, up to the area that i mentioned earlier which is the sheep bale feeders where I've, I've contained Miscanthus lutaria riparius and the reason that you have to contain it is this so you can see now how vigorous that grass is and that grass has been contained in that plastic bamboo barrier that goes down 900 millimeters. Now, if I hadn't done that, this is its second year in this actual ring feeder. And look at it, I absolutely love this one. And it makes 10 foot for me at the moment, nine or 10 foot. And in its native Taiwan, I think it's Southeast Asia or somewhere like that, it can make 20 to 25 feet. So it's an absolute belter. And I love it, I mean, it's just a grass, but contained in that ring feeder is going to look absolutely beautiful this year because it'll have this wacky unnatural clump forming shape that it wouldn't normally have like i say it'd be an aggressive spreader so the miscanthus i showed you earlier in the little tin that's what it will become if i hadn't put it in the tin and i do really like it even though it's an aggressive spreader as long as you can contain these things, they're definitely worth persevering with. Okay, so I think that's enough of that. Take you back round this way. This is at the back of the shack. And we'll do a little view from here. And it's looking nice. Oh, that's another Sorbus there. And that's a lovely one. That's called Autumn Spire. Another good one. And then the alliums down there, the big leaved things there, alliums. And I think it's Globemaster. 
I think. Not sure. There you go. So not much happening in here at the moment, but it is all growing, having said that. But nothing in flower as such at the moment. In another month to a month and a half, this border will be completely transformed. Completely. I'll end where I started. This shot here, I always like this shot. And I shall talk to you on the next one. Ta-da!